Is he texting and watching a video at the same time? Hey, what are you doing? I'm texting and watching a video at the same time. You can't do that. You can't do that. And yet I'm doing it. Yeah. Nice. Introducing the new Samsung Galaxy S3. A beautiful young newlywed, apparently mowed down by a car on a back road. At first they thought it was a classic hit and run, but things just aren't adding up. And now those close to her are about to start talking, sharing some troubling secrets that reveal why for years this beloved kindergarten teacher might have been on a collision course with a killer. Again, here's Dennis Murphy. While Justine's parents had admittedly never been overly fond of Eric, they always tried to keep an open mind about it. Yet, a few days after the funeral, when they went to pick up a few things at the house, they say he blurted out just some awful things. He told me, you know, I never really wanted to get married or have any more children or anything anyways, and that he thought he'd be just fine without Justine in his life. And in their grief, as the friends and family gathered, stories started to tumble out, and not your typical recollections about a loved one who suddenly passes away. Justine's friends had never shared with each other what they call their violent Eric stories. They worried if they spoke about them, they would lose her friendship. Yet now Lauren was talking about the day Eric stormed into an apartment the two sisters were sharing for the summer. He sort of pushed his way into the door and he pinned her up against the wall. And so I came out and, and I said, get your hands off of her. And he was extremely startled to see me. And I said, if you don't get your hands off of her, I'm calling the police, get out of here. Kathleen, her teacher friend, remembers vividly a few months before the wedding, Justine confiding in her that she was scared of the man she was about to marry. I encouraged her to walk away. I gave her the option to come live with me and she denied that, telling me that she feared for my well-being if she lived for me. you too? Yes. Did you ever say to her, Justine, this is a crazy situation? You've got to get yourself out of this. I did. Told her she could do better. She was beautiful. She was young. She saw her whole life ahead of her. She could meet somebody else. But she told me she had invested too much time in the relationship. Nobody else would want her. She would never find anybody else, which I just thought was crazy. While Eric denied having any stormy physical fights with Justine, there was talk of other women in his life. Did you hear stories that he was running around on her? I did. How'd she deal with that? I think she just tried to push it to the back of her mind. Do you think she was happy? I don't. And when investigators looked at Eric's cell phone records, there was one call in particular at 11.46 the night Justine died that caught their attention. It's a call to the mother of his two children. It ended with Eric asking her if there was any chance for them romantically, and she said, no, not as long as you're married, or you know, that you're married. He said that he thought he made a mistake in getting married. Is it important to you, or is that just somebody shooting the breeze with an old girlfriend? Well, the timing of it's very peculiar, and the fact that it's only an hour and 10 or 20 minutes before our victim's alleged call for help. But that woman, Allison Crawford, says that midnight call that had gotten investigators suspicious was being misinterpreted. She's a nurse at the very hospital where Eric's mother lay dying and says it only made sense for him to call her. I believe that it was easier for Eric to ask me questions about his mother. Even the part when Eric told her his marriage had been a mistake and asking if they had a chance as a couple wasn't out of the ordinary, she says, and certainly not a watershed moment signaling he was going to kill his wife, if that's what investigators were thinking. I think that it was uh, dramatized for reaction, and I don't think that it was uh, really looked at as just two people exchanging information. I think we underestimate our emotions and the things that we say when we're upset. And I think that it's very easy to go from point A to point B and not really know how you got there. And if we talk about Eric feeling he has regrets in his life, this is not a one-time conversation with you. No, we talked. 
many times and throughout many phases of his life. So that would not have been uncommon. Including after he got married. Correct. And even though Eric tried to call her many times that very day, she points out they had two children together. So of course they'd talk. It didn't mean there was still a romantic connection between them. Eric and I cared for one another for a long time. And then he decided to choose another path and we became co-parents. I've always cared for him. I will always care for him in a different way now. But it's still there. We have children together. There will always be a connection. Yet another woman would tell investigators that she did have a romantic connection with Eric. She said she'd slept with him a few weeks before he married Justine, then again a few days after the funeral. Steve confronted him directly about the rumors that he'd been running around on his daughter. So I said, there were never any other women. And he said, well, there was, was one not long after Justine was killed. I got drunk one night and slept with a woman. And while Eric would say later he was only acting out of grief, it was when Stephen Swartz, ever the businessman, started looking into the couple's finances that he got really worried. It was starting to look as though his daughter may have just been a piggy bank that got cracked open on a cold backcountry road. When we come back, a husband who needs money and a wife, well, you'll see. When you add up all the money, she was worth quite a lot dead. Yes, sir. When Shattered continues. <laughs>